In this video, I'm going to show you the best search engine optimization strategy for Google ads. In fact, I'm going to give you a step by step process on how I personally find keywords first before implementing them into the titles, descriptions, tag sections, and basically everything you need to do in order to get results like these with Google ads. Let's jump right into it. So I have already pulled up a specific product on my screen, which we're going to be using as an example for this video. And this product is called a rower machine. Basically what it does is you pretend like you're rowing on a canoe or a little boat and it's supposed to work out your back muscles. Now, even though I personally don't use this at the gym, all I really need to do is get a general idea of what this product is called and to understand some one to maybe three words or key words, which you can use to then describe this product. And obviously the title does a great job of telling you exactly what it is. The reason why you need to do this is because in order to begin your search engine optimization strategy for your e-commerce brand, you need to first off start by doing good keyword research. This is where 99% of Shopify stores end up failing. As a result, they're not able to get the scale they want to get with Google ads or just about any other advertising platform out there. So the first step is for you to understand what is your product called and what your audience would search it up as on Google. So obviously this product would be called a home rowing machine or just a rowing machine. That's essentially what it would be called. And I do recommend that you stick to maybe one to three maximum words to describe your product, which you can then use within the Google Keyword Planner tool. So if you're not sure what your product is called or how your audience would search up for that product on Google, well, obviously that's a little bit of a problem. You can talk to your supplier to understand what it's exactly called, or you can just go on your supplier's product page. And I'm sure they've done keyword research for that product, which you can then use to determine what it's called. But that's the first step of the search and an optimization strategy for Google ads. The next step is to then copy that name, whatever it, you have come up with for that specific product, or in this case, we're gonna call it rowing machine. And what you wanna do is you wanna go on over to the Google Keyword Planner tool, because from here, essentially what we will be doing is we'll be searching that up within our given market, because what we wanna do is we wanna understand what are people using along with this main keyword to also search up for our product? And again, keep in mind, the reason why we need to do this for success with Google is because these keywords are like interest targeting with Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, without an interest that you choose for those advertising platforms, obviously your ads are gonna fail. Same thing is true for Google ads. Without these keywords, which act as interests with Google, it's just not gonna work out for Google's algorithm because it's gonna have a bit of a difficult time understanding who you're going after, especially if you end up implementing the wrong kind of keywords within your product listings. So for example, when I say wrong, I mean, if you're trying to sell apples, you put a lot of the keyword oranges within your description, then Google's algorithm will think it's an orange because you know it's not a human sitting behind a computer looking through your website understanding what you do and what you sell and all of that stuff so that's why it's super important to have the right keyword but again write that keyword within the keyword planner and you can choose the different countries that you target if you're one of my og followers you know that i used to not recommend that you choose more than one country here but it's 2023 it's time for something different we're gonna choose all of the countries that we target so for example let's say we're able to ship to canada as well we're gonna choose canada here as well and go ahead and click save once you do that you can just go ahead and click get results and now here's the big disclaimer if you did this correctly you should get at least two to three different keywords or more than two to three popping up here now here we obviously did this correctly because you know i'm sure you cannot say that's just a joke by the way as you can see we got 1300 different keywords coming up here which is more than enough for our job right here which is to do proper SEO and implement a strategy for our product listings, which then can get us results with Google ads. So once you do see that there's multiple different keywords coming up, and by the way, make sure these keywords are relevant to what you sell, because number one thing that's important with Google is relevant. So obviously water rowing machine sounds about right for this product, rowing machine for sale, and then there's a few branded keywords for certain brands. We wanna avoid this if you're not selling this kind of brand, just because you don't wanna get in trouble with that brand and you don't wanna have angry customers. So we avoid those which we don't sell, and it looks like this is about the right kind of keyword. So once you're making sure that those are right, next step is to rank it by most monthly searches to the least, just so we can see that on minimum, there's about 30,000 or more monthly search volume. Now, 
when I said 30,000 or more in my previous videos, a lot of people used to believe that it should be 30,000 or more per keyword. And if we kind of apply that here, that means we'll only end up using about five different keywords here. Obviously, that's not ideal. And when I say 30,000 or more, I mean 30,000 or more in total. So in any given month, we can see it's 750K here. In May, it's 861K. So what you wanna be sure of is that within that given month, which you're selling within, so right now when I'm recording this video, it's March. Last March, it should be above 30,000 and the trend should generally be above 30,000. If it's on the lowering end, then that means that product really might not be ideal for you to continue really investing your money within, especially if you're on a limited budget. So if you're like most DTC brands, if you're like most e-commerce brands, you wanna make sure your advertising budget goes towards the products that are actually gonna have the best possible chance at selling. And this is what we do, by the way, for all the e-commerce brands, we handle under my Google Ads agency, your marketing, which if you're currently doing $40,000 or more per month in revenue, you need just a little bit of extra help scaling your brand to the next level with Google Ads. Go onto my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make that happen. But obviously this search volume is more than sufficient. So this tells us that this product is something we can definitely allocate some of our advertising budget toward. So once we do that, then the next step is to actually go ahead and start writing down these keywords. Now, there's a little bit of an extra step you need to take before understanding if this keyword is ideal or not. And this step is basically using a website called iSearchFrom.com is essentially mimics a random search done within the country you're targeting. So for example, if we choose United States right here, English as the language and just write it down, what's gonna happen is as you can see, it says you can simulate using Google search from a different location or device or perform a search with custom search settings. That's very useful because you don't want your IP address deciding what ends up showing up for you within the Google shopping or Google search listing. So we just click search. And by the way, one disclaimer, you can't click on any of the ads because if you click on it, it'll take you back to this search listing. So just use it to kind of do a little bit of gauging of what your competitors are doing because when it comes to the research with your keywords, and by the way, you should be doing this as the CEO or CMO, or if you have an agency or a media buyer doing this for your e-commerce brand, make sure they're doing this accurately. But essentially what you wanna do is you wanna look at what's coming up here and ask yourself two questions. Number one, is the product coming up here exactly what I wanna sell or similar to it? And number two, are these competitors selling the product at a price range I wanna sell it? So if you sell a rowing machine at $50 million, obviously this is not an ideal keyword for you to rank for because majority of them sell from between $900 all the way up to $2,000 on the higher range. A $50 million rowing machine is probably not gonna do too well here. So you wanna make sure the pricing is kind of around the ballpark of where you wanna be at. But let's say in a both of these match, then what you wanna do is you wanna note down this keyword on a little Google Doc. I created a Google Doc called Keyword Doc. It does not have to be fancy at all because with e-commerce, simple works best. So we're gonna just write down that keyword, rowing machine, and move on to the next keyword on the list. And we're gonna do this step by step for every keyword that's coming up here until we have a good, decent sized list of 10 to 20 different keywords. So upright rower looks about right and their price range, it now dropped to about $300, but overall it still goes up to 2000. So this is more than good enough for us. We're gonna write that down. And again, make sure to ask yourself two, those two questions for every keyword you're looking at. And then again, go ahead and kind of skip over these branded keywords unless you sell a concept to rower, but we don't sell that, so we're gonna move on. Peloton rowing, so I, one thing you wanna keep in mind, a lot of these keywords, they will not be buying intent. So it says rowing. So Peloton rowing, I'm not sure what exactly that means, but if it's kind of a search intent based keyword, like it's wanting to learn more about how to row correctly, or rowing instead of rower. Those are very slight differences, but they make a big impact on whether this keyword is ideal for you or not, because you don't wanna kind of look at the keywords or even have them on your product page, which talk about how to row or Peloton rowing instead of buying intent keywords like Peloton rower with the ER. So that's a very subtle difference, but it makes a huge impact with your SEO strategy for your Google Ads account. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and go through this list, just kind of go through each keyword one by one, and I'll get back to you guys once I do this because I don't wanna bore you with my back and forth strategy. Two 
hours later. All right, so after what it felt like two hours of work, I have finally come up with a list of 10 very targeted, very buying intent keywords, which we can now apply to the next step of the process, which is the title creation process. Because when it comes to search engine optimization for Google as a specific strategy, the number one step of that strategy is having a SEO title. So that's what we're gonna start off with. Now, in terms of the search engine optimized title, it's a very simple step-by-step -step process that I use. Again, this is something your current Google Ads agency or your media buyer, or if you're doing this yourself, which I don't recommend, by the way, if you wanna really scale to the next level, are doing, you should kind of follow this approach. So what I do for my title creation strategy to ensure my title is search engine optimized and it can actually beat all of these competitors very easily is to start off by, first of all, starting with the first keyword I have come up with. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna write title right here to know that this is the title. And I like to start off with my first keyword that I searched up as the base, because if you did this correctly from top to bottom, you will notice that the first keyword that you have is actually the most searched with the highest search volume, which is very important for SEO because it should be the highest search volume from greatest to least within your titles in terms of where you place these keywords. So I'm gonna show you that very shortly. So that's what we do. We're just writing rowing machine because that's the first keyword on our list. Now we move on to the next keyword, upright rower. Now the key to this is understanding if the keywords that you don't have within your title already make sense for your product. So if the product I'm selling, if it looks like an upright rower and you should know if it's upright or whatever the keyword is for your product, you got to make sure that it's actually what you are selling. So if this was like a sleeping rower and I put the keyword upright rower, obviously that's not relevant and it's not going to do well within Google search results and it's not going to give me results. So I want to make sure this is an upright rower and this guy looks like he's sitting upright. So I'm just going to assume this is an upright rower. And the next step is to include any word from here from this next keyword, which you already don't have. So we don't have the word upright and we don't necessarily have the word rower. We have rowing machine, we have rowing, but we don't have rower. So obviously it wouldn't really make sense to have rowing rower machine or rower rowing machine in there. So we're just going to skip this because we already have some form of this word within the title, but we definitely can't add upright. So now the next step is to understand where should we add upright in the front, in the middle, at the end. And this is just based on English grammar skills. You just got to make sure it makes sense when you're reading it, not just for the algorithm, but for the human as well. So obviously upright makes much more sense here at the start. So we're going to write it upright, move on to the next one, Peloton rowing machine, same strategy. Now we understand what do we don't have in the title already? We don't have the word Peloton. We already have rowing machine. Now, if you're not sure what Peloton is, you can search it up. So what that's what we're going to do. We're just going to write in Peloton rowing machine right here to understand if it is a product we sell or not. So it looks like Peloton is actually a brand of some sort and we don't sell Peloton because this is not a Peloton rowing machine. So we're going to skip that. We're not going to even have that in the title. Move on to the next one. Rower with water. We do the same thing. Let's assume that there's water inside this little machine right there. So we're going to do upright rowing machine with water just to make sure that it makes sense with water. Move on now hydro rower machine and it looks like this might be spelled wrong but we're just gonna do upright hydro rowing machine with water move on now with the keywords like these where it has best you don't want to toot your own horn and have best upright hydro rowing machine with water in the title you can do this for the description or the image alt tags but not in the title so we're gonna skip that seated rowing machine we don't have the word seated so upright hydro rowing machine with water we're just gonna make sure that seated works here so seated upright hydro seated rowing machine with water move on water rowing machine we already have all of that we move on rowing machine for sale same thing here we don't want to have the word for sale in there because it just doesn't make sense back rowing machine so upright hydro seated back rowing machine with water and there you go that is your search engine optimized saddle very simple step-by-step -step process it just leads us towards the title we want to be using that search engine optimized and that can be all of these people. Now, if you want to kind of take it to the next level, you can include your brand name in there as well. So let's say your brand is called XYZ. So we're going to put the brand name at the very front. I used to normally recommend putting it at the very end, but nowadays it makes more sense to have the brand name in the front just to add more authority. So XYZ upright hydro seated back rowing machine with water. It sounds like music to my ears and it's definitely going to sound like music to Google's algorithm when they crawl through your website 
to understand what you sell. But that's the next step of the strategy for search engine optimization for Google. And that leads us to the description strategy. Now, in terms of the description strategy, you want to keep it very simple. It's just about writing a very optimized and direct description. But I don't recommend you spend more than 15 to 30 minutes on writing a description. In fact, you can spend five to 10 minutes by using a software like ChatGPT or Bard to do it for you. In fact, I released a video recently that goes over ChatGPT and Bard and how it's going to influence Google Ads. I recommend you check that video out after this one, but definitely you can use that and really cut your time in half. And I recommend you start writing your own descriptions for product that show demand and that start selling instead of doing it the opposite way. So for the description, just keep it very simple. But what you want to do is you want to insert each of these keywords that are relevant to your product. No more. And I'm going to write this down no more than three times within the description. So this is a key to finding success with search and optimization for Google. You want to at least have each of these keywords a maximum of three times within your description, but no more than three times. That's kind of where it goes into the black hat world and Google doesn't like that. So don't come crying in the comment section talking about how you got suspended with your Google ads account because you had each keyword like 10 times in there. So that's the strategy for descriptions. Now, for the tag section, it's going to be very simple in terms of the strategy. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on over to my Shopify store to kind of illustrate what you want to do within the tag section. So, all right, so we're inside a product page right here. And what you want to do is once you're done creating that awesome search engine optimized title for your Shopify store, your description is good for your e-commerce brand. Now we come down here to these sections right here. So there's different sections. As you see, there's the product category section, product type, vendor, collection, so on and so forth. This is the tag section. And what you want to do is you want to implement, first of all, all the tags within here. So so just copy everything and just paste it right here in the tag section. That's the first step. Then you can write something for the product type section. Again, I recommend you write in your main keyword for the product type. So whatever is at the very top, write it in for the product type vendor. Just put in your brand's name to add more authority. You can just write in the collection you have on your Shopify store or your e-commerce brand in general. I recommend you name your collections based on these keywords as well, just because when Google's algorithm crawls, it has a very easy time understanding what you're selling. But that's kind of the third and final step for a proper search and an optimization strategy for Google ads. And once you're done with all of these three steps, title, description, the tag section, you are now ready to launch that product on Google ads and really get a lot of extra results. And again, if you're already doing $40,000 or more per month in revenue with your Google ads account or your e-commerce brand in general, you need just a little bit of extra help scaling to the next level with your brand. Go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and just book that free call with me to see if we can work together and scale it to the next level. But I want you to watch this video right here on the five Google Merchant Center tips and tricks that you can use to scale your Shopify store to the next level. Level because again, along with the proper SEO strategy, you need a very optimized Google Merchant Center to then find the best possible results with your Google Ads account.